Hey guys, welcome to Grow Milkweed Plants YouTube channel. Right now we're in the guest bedroom and uh, we're going to be taking a look at growing milkweed plants. What we're doing is uh, we've been doing water germination. Let me show you the water germination setup. On today's video, we're going to take the seeds that are germinated and plant them. And that's going to give us the milkweed plants that we're looking for. All right, this is the water germination setup. And what we're looking at is plastic cups containing water, containing milkweed seeds. And in addition to that, they're placed on, on top of a heating mat, which is plugged into the wall. Uh, that gives us um, warm water, which is germinating the seeds, as you can see. I've got some that are still dry because I'm staggering this process. If I were to have uh, put water in all of these cups, I would have probably most of these seeds germinating, and I'm not prepared for that. So today, we're going to take a look at these seeds right here, Asclepias arosa, uh, desert milkweed, um, and we're going to get those planted. So to get to the point where we're ready to grow these seeds, for the last five days, I've been doing water changes and checking the temperature of the seeds. Water is currently indicating 78, 79 degrees, which is great. And then I take it and I get the water out, screening it through here, and put the seeds right back inside and adding the water back in. That was done twice a day, morning and night, noon and midnight. When you wake up, when you go to sleep, it was done twice a day for five days. And now we have germinated Asclepias arosa seeds along with many other species. So let's show you how to get these planted. All right, so to get the seed planted, what we need is um, a container with soil, the seeds. I like to use a pair of tweezers to handle the seed, particularly the root of the seed, and um, a little bit of water. So we'll take uh, these items here and get started. Now these are already growing. Uh, because I did this process before. So this is a 10 inch container and I'll provide a link in the description of this video. And what I've got here is uh, probably showy milkweed with um, a 10 inch root and it's established nicely to the point where I can plant it in the fall. And uh, so what we're going to try to do is get these seeds started in this mix here. I'm going to apply moisture. Letting the water soak in here. And now let's come in for a closer look. All right, this is the container that I got wet, and you can see the moisture is dripping at the bottom. So all the soil in here has some moisture in it. It's time to pick a seed. So let's pick any of these wonderful seeds here. It's really nice when they have a straight root, but that really is not always the case. Do do do. Here's a nice seed. And uh, what I need to do is get the white part of the seed into the soil and the leaf part of the seed, which is in the seed casing, is gonna be towards the sunlight. Always keep the remaining seeds in water. They need that moisture. They're gonna dry out. And so we need to get this one into the soil. Clean off those tweezers so they have a nice bite on the seed, a nice clean grip. Place it in there and then put the soil around it. Now 
once I do that, I'm also going to want to water it. I'm going to go to the mist setting. And then I'm going to adjust the height of the seed if necessary. It's a little bit too covered right now. Very careful though. Because that root is now in the soil. I think we're good. Each seed is very unique. Like this one grows out and then a crescent coming around. So what I did is I made a trench in this soil. The root is very, very fragile. So you don't want to disturb the root when you're putting it in. So just want to let it fall into that hole as naturally as possible. And that might mean that you make a different shape hole for each root. And this one has the trench because it has a long sideways root. So I'm gonna get some of that soil um, down around it. And then I'm gonna flood it out. And then when it floods, it'll put all the soil into the root, the radical, the root radical. Let's see how that goes. A little bit of water. Looks good. I've already planted this row, working my way back. I planted uh, 15 seeds, 14 of them sprouted. So that's gonna take up these two rows. And that's basically it. We're gonna have to revisit this in a couple days and see how they're doing. I did break two roots um, while handling them. The um, root, as I mentioned, is very fragile, the root radical and I didn't have the hole the proper shape, and so I was forcing it. And as I was forcing it in there, the uh, lower part is very delicate, and um, it broke off. So the plant really doesn't like that. When that happens, it's it could be fatal for the plant. It's hard to say. Um, only time will tell if the plant will be okay or you know if it was if it was too much for it that fit in there nicely so I'm gonna give it a little bit of a push but being very gentle not disturbing the root and then just adding in the soil around it keeping the seed head as close to the surface as possible we don't want to bury it what I do is get it wet and then nudge it back up a little bit. It's a hot day today. It's going to be about 99 degrees, but that's okay. You know what I'm going to do with this one is put a little sand around it. I've got some sand in the bucket here. I'm gonna take some sand and uh, I just see that some of the root is exposed and I wanna cover that up so it has something. And the sand is a very soft medium, especially at the surface right here. Um, the seed is gonna have no problem pushing up through a light layer of sand. Now I've used sand before with success, just on the very top very top and the sand might work its way down into the seedling 
soil, which is fine because uh, it's heavier and it should increase the drainage. All right, there we go. So it's good because I cannot see any of the root. The uh, seed head is buried a little bit deeper than I'd like, but uh, that's going to be okay. Now, if these new seedlings were left in full sunlight over here for as short as like one or two hours in the Nevada sun, it could create a lot of problems as far as them just uh, just drying out completely. Um, the root needs to stay in contact with the soil. I saw a little hole there, so I filled it in with a little bit of sand. Um, I've got to go to work now, so... These uh, seedlings, I'm actually going to place them in the garage. It's warm in the garage, but at least um, they won't have direct sunlight. And so they shouldn't, they shouldn't dry out completely. Um, if they were to dry out completely, they're not going to re recuperate from that. Um, remember, they've been in a cup of water for five days. They've absorbed a lot of moisture. And they have a really high expectations for continuing to get moisture. So we're gonna provide that to them. When they get a little bit bigger like these, the plant has an established root system and it, it's able to survive drought longer. And then as the plant gets into future years, it's gonna establish that root system even more to the point where it can survive a drought up to like four or five years without um, much winter or summer precipitation. It's hard on the plant, but they can do that. Uh, but in the meantime, these are going to get uh, uh, watering. We're going to get put in the garage tonight. I'm going to set them out uh, when I get home from work around midnight. And that's going to give them morning sun. Uh, of course, I'm going to water them again. Um, you got to increase the water on these seedlings quite a bit. Again, they were sitting in water. And now they're in soil. They have to make that conversion from water to soil. And... If the soil is wet, the roots will work their way through that. And so a nice deep watering so that it comes all the way out the bottom and then uh, doing that frequently. Now, sometimes you can only, you only need to water the top a little bit, just water it so that that root stays wet. But then every once in a while, maybe every couple of days, depending on the weather, there's a lot of different factors. You'll have to do a deep watering to encourage them to find that, that deeper part of the container. All right, I hope you found this information useful to get your milkweed seeds from sprouting to growing. If you enjoyed this episode, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the episode, and share it with your friends. Don't forget to look at the detailed description that's right below, and you'll find some information about how you can register for playing the game Milkweed Madness. Uh, prizes in 2019 are going to include a water germination kit, which has a seed warming mat, infrared thermometer, and plastic cups. Of course, you'll also be getting milkweed seeds, so you can do the same thing that I'm doing. There's going to be a pair of ARS 120DX 8-inch pruners, and also the book Monarch Buddies, and more. So check out the link to Milkweed Madness in the show description, and get out there and grow milkweed plants. Remember, if it's good for the butterflies, it's good for me.